Today, we're going to talk about one of the most common types of Power Automate flows, and that is an approval flow. To get started, go to office.com and select Power Automate from the list of apps. From the home screen, we will navigate down to Create and select Automated Cloud Flow. There are multiple scenarios in which you would use an approval flow, such as getting a document approved, a process, or even just approving a vacation request. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to go with the vacation request example today. The first thing we're going to do is pick a trigger for this flow. There are several available in Power Automate, but mine is based on a SharePoint list. That list gathers basic information such as the employee's name, dates of their vacation, and supervisor's email address. The different rows in the SharePoint list are called items. Therefore, my trigger will be when an item is created. Now Power Automate knows that every time somebody enters information into my SharePoint list, the flow should begin. So the first thing I need to do is tell Power Automate where the list is. In this case, it is on my testing team and it is the vacation approval list. Add a new step and search the connectors and actions for approvals. Now I'm going to select start and wait for an approval. Now we're going to select an approval type. This is going to be a matter of personal preference or your business rules. You can approve or reject and wait for everyone to respond if there are multiple approvers, or you can wait for the first person to respond. If you only have one approver, this is the choice that you're going to make, but you can even choose to set up some custom responses. For this scenario, I'm just going to say approve or reject first to respond. Next, we're going to enter the mandatory information for this action. For the title, I'm going to use a combination of dynamic content and static text. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the title from the SharePoint list, which in this case is the employee's name. And behind that, I will type in is requesting vacation. Next, we are going to look at the assigned to field. You can put in the email addresses of a person or persons separated by semicolons if the approval is always going to the same list of people. In my example, I have included the supervisor's email address as one of the entries on the SharePoint list so that we can pull it in dynamically. And this is all the information that you need to run this basic flow. There are additional options under show advanced options. However, in this video, we're going to keep it simple and just go with the mandatory entries. At this point in building the flow, you have the basic elements for an approval flow. You could stop here if you wanted to. However, I'm going to take this one step further and I'm going to say that I want an email to go to the person who submitted the vacation request based on the approval status. All right, I'm going to break into the regularly scheduled programming here and share with you that when I first built this flow, I built it a little bit differently. And this is why I suggest that you always test your flows because when I tested it, the outcome was different than what I originally expected based on the fact that I had built this flow for my job six months ago. So we're going to go ahead and jump back in and I am going to point out to you the differences between how the flow used to work and how it works now. So as you now know, I had already completed this flow and then when I went to test it, it was broken. So now instead of watching me build the flow from scratch, I'm just going to walk you through how the flow should look. After building the start and wait for approval, I clicked on new step. Originally, I went straight for the condition control, but the flow didn't work. It kept going down the if no path every single time. I consulted with a buddy of mine who knows way more about Power Automate than I do, and he let me know that the reason my flow kept going down the if no path, regardless of the answer I put in, was because you needed to tie the flow to responses, plural, and have the condition control be the outcome. So this is why I added the apply to each step and built the condition control within that container. So once we said, look for all of the responses, grab the outcome, and if it is equal to approve, 
I want to send an email and that email is going to be built based on the fact that it's going to look at SharePoint and look for the email address of the person who created the SharePoint item, i.e. the vacation request. For simplicity, I just put approved in the subject line. I, and then I just typed in some generic text in the body of the email. This can be anything you want. You can make it as simple or complicated as you want, but you do have to have at least one character in this field. The last thing I would like this flow to do is update the SharePoint list with the status of the approval. So what I've done is I pulled in update item, pointed it towards my testing team and said, look at the vacation approval list. And for the most recent request, i.e. the ID, and update the status column to approve. Because remember, we're running down the if yes side of the flow, which means that the supervisor has said I can have vacation. If the supervisor rejects the vacation request, i.e. it's not equal to approve, then Power Automate is going to run down this if no request line. I'm still going to have it send an email. I gave it a generic subject line. And this time what I did is I pulled in the comments from the approver to automatically be sent in the body of the email. And I'm going to have Power Automate update the SharePoint list again, except this time, instead of grabbing the status of approved, it's going to say it is rejected. So now that I've fixed my flow by using the apply to each step, we are going to save it and test it one more time. So I'm going to say manually test the flow and we're going to navigate to teams and enter a vacation request. So I'm just going to put in my name and say that I want to have Friday off. This column is a people column, which means that I can search for my supervisor's name using the global address list from Outlook. So I'm just going to type in Jessica give some comments and notice that the approval status is defaulted to in progress. And then we're going to hit save. I have navigated to teams and logged in as the supervisor so we can look at the approvals app. I'm on the receive tab and you can see that Heather is requesting vacation, the status, when it was created, who created it and who it should be approved by. I will click on the request and a floating dialog box will open, which is where I can put in any comments that are needed and select approve or reject. If this is your first time seeing the approvals app, I will be making a video specifically on that topic and I will put it in the description box below as soon as the video is completed. Now we've come back to Power Automate and you can see that the flow has run successfully. If I go to my teams and look at the SharePoint list, you can see that Heather requested vacation on the 26th from Jessica, where the status used to be in progress, it is now approved. And all of that happened via Power Automate. For those of you interested in seeing what the broken flow looked like, it's right here on the screen. This way you know what to avoid. Thank you for learning with me today and I'll see you in the next video.